Привет, друзья! Я рад приветствовать вас на канале Капитан Герман. И сегодня у нас специальный выпуск. Я уже ранее выкладывал интервью с различными яхтсменами, но так как англоязычный контент на нашем канале заходит не очень, люди пишут негативные комментарии по поводу того, что нафига мы должны читать эти английские конченые буквы, пускай они говорят по-русски, но, тем не менее, именно такие фидбэки ограничивают контент на нашем канале. И я снимаю много материалов, много интервью, но делаю крайне редко те, которые, на мой взгляд, действительно интересны. А остальные складываю в ящик, которые потом при монтаже пойдут на англоязычный канал, но это как бы все лирик. Сегодня у нас в рубрике очень интересный человек, который показывает всем, насколько сильным могут быть люди в современном мире. Дастин попал в аварию на мотоцикле и лишился одной руки и одной ноги. И тем не менее, даже после такого серьезного повреждения, он решил, что нафиг я не буду сидеть дома и занялся яхтингом. И сейчас мы встретились с ним на Карибах, на Гренаде. Я еду к нему в гости, мы сделаем с ним небольшое интервью, и он расскажет о том, что же с ним произошло, и главное, покажет, как он яхтит. Но это будет уже непосредственно в конце видео. Поэтому, друзья, уникальный материал. Дастин и Single-Handed Sailor. Поехали к нему! Permission to get on board? <laughs> okay. Hi guys. I would like to introduce you my friend Dustin. Hello. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Of course we will drink and drive. <laughs> <laughs> and dinghy at least. <laughs> and dinghy as well. Yeah. And both and dinghy everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We are sailors, it's what we do. Yeah, normally uh, almost every day, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah kind like, of. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> So, uh, where are you from? I am born in California. I went to high school and college, some college in Oregon, and then moved to Hawaii in my early 20s. Ah, okay. So, so just all, all your life you spent in Hawaii? Yeah, so most of my adult life was in Hawaii. So about 10 years in California, 10 years in Oregon, 10 years in Hawaii. Ah, cool. Uh, when uh, did you decide to sail? Because it's just, you know, we are sailors. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Let's go to the beginning of your life. <laughs> so, the first time I decided to sail was about six years ago. Um, it was just like idea uh, or it was a just dream from childhood? No, I, I thought about it before because I, I love diving and I thought that it would be cool to go dive the most remote places in the world by a sailboat. And so, it was always kind of in the back of my head, but I never made any plans to actually do it. And then after my accident... Um, but the accident it is the next question. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> um, but really it was because I was financially devastated, I started looking for other things to do with my life and randomly chose sailing. But uh, when uh, you had an accident and so, what had happened? So this happened October 18th of 2008 and I was hit by a drunk driver. I was on a RC51 motorcycle. I was just on my way home one night and I uh, was on a straightaway and the drunk just swerved straight at me. It was a big lifted Chevy truck. And so head on collision, my arm flew about 15 meters from the scene of the accident. And um, when I woke up on the side of the road, there was nobody there. Like I came conscious. And but you could, you could die just easily because just of bleeding. Could have easily done, yeah. I, when I like came to, like the first thing I remember, it was almost like I woke up from a dream. Like I had... Uh, like been in my bed or something like I you know just like oh what's going on and I still had my helmet on and I couldn't figure out why my hand wasn't like helping me take my helmet off I've noticed I still feel both arms there's this thing called phantom limb pain yeah the phantom pain yeah and I so I still feel my left arm as if it was there and I did then as well and so 
it wasn't until I reached over and touched it that I realized that it was gone and you know I could feel my bone and the wet cold oh. bloody stump and I freaked out I screamed for help and there was nobody there the guy who had hit me drove like another 600 meters and off into a ditch and um, so I sat there for a minute and uh, I called the paramedics so it's 911 in the US and uh, so I dialed 911 and I even remember just before I called, I thought about it for a second because I knew that I couldn't stand. I was, uh, I knew my arm was gone. You just, you, you just were exactly the same position, like just it was after the accident. So you just yeah. couldn't even move, I think. Yeah, so I, yeah, I thought about it. I was like, do I really want to live like crippled the rest of my life? And so I didn't think for too long, but I eventually called 911 and they came and picked me up. And How much time does it take? They were there six minutes after I called. Very fast. Very fast. Yeah. The so you, did you explain to them what had happened and just they yep. or it is a normal regular time to? to well, come? there was a there was a fire department only about a kilometer away. So oh, okay. So just because they were they're really close. close. Yeah, the location really helped on that. And then it was a 20-minute drive to the hospital. Oh, but you're just already been under, under the supervision, so that's yeah. more or less okay. So just, at least they could do something, you know. Yeah. There was almost two days where my life was in question. Like, uh, so... Because of bleeding. Yeah, I had a punctured spleen, a punctured lung, I had four broken ribs, a broken scapula. I aspirated, which is vomiting into your lungs, which they say is a 50-50 survival rate by itself. Uh -huh. And I'd lost most of my blood. Uh, when I got to the hospital, they gave me pretty much a complete blood transfusion. They, uh, 13 units of blood, and I think your body holds like 15. Yeah, I just still lost almost everything. Uh... Pretty much lost it all, yeah. Yeah, crazy. But uh, did you decide to sail after the accident? Yeah, so what happened is uh, it was financially devastating. The, uh, my own health insurance company ended up suing me for half a million dollars, uh -huh. you know, 440,000 US. And I uh, obviously didn't have the money, and so I declared bankruptcy and was completely debt free at that point. And I started trying to go back to work. I had two businesses. I had a commercial fishing boat and a carpet cleaning business. Uh -huh. But by this point, both of them hadn't really been used in three years. So every time I tried to go fishing or clean a carpet, something would break. And I had no money and I had no credit. So like every time I'd do a job, like all the money would go to fix up the equipment. And I really needed like $20,000. No, no, no big difference, yeah. just no big gap, you know, yeah. just to do it. Ah, okay. And so I was just, I was looking, I was like, you know, this is going to take me at least 10 years to get like ahead again. And uh, so I started looking for something else. I started looking at other jobs, and eventually I found a website called the Slocum Society .com, uh -huh. And it was all people who had set records sailing around the world by themselves. And I was like, well, there's no double amputee on this list. I'll just do that. So uh, just it, it was just you look on a website, just check information, and you, it was like an idea. Just I want to do it. Yeah. So I was just like, I was thinking it's like maybe I could just do something big. You know, if I just pick out a big thing to do, it's like I'm just going to go be the first double amputee to sail around the world and, uh -huh. and try to figure out a way to do it. And so it took, uh, yeah. uh, it took me about two years to actually find a boat and then um, and then get everything kind of ready. And then I spent one month learning to sail and then left Hawaii. But, uh, did you buy this boat in US or so in Hawaii? This boat I bought in Thailand. Uh -huh. um, my first boat was a 1968 Alberg sloop. And I bought it for twelve thousand dollars in Hawaii, and then sailed it from Hawaii to Thailand. And then, so just yeah, all, all Pacific. Yep. But South Pacific or just uh, yeah, the did, North? Yeah, I did the South Pacific as well. So I went all the way down to like Fiji and Vanuatu and Solomon Islands, and then, and then I came back up to Papua New Guinea and Australia and Indonesia and around to Thailand. Okay. So, but uh, is it a second second already boat which you are uh, just? Uh, or uh, did you do it just on uh, one boat? So this, the world. this is my second boat now. So my first boat, when I got to Thailand, it was in really bad shape. Uh -huh. and, um, I'd completely run out of money, and the motor wasn't working, the rigging was in bad shape, and um, I actually left Bali four times and got towed back in three. Uh -huh. Like I was planning like a thousand mile trip from Bali to Malaysia. And I couldn't get more than five miles. I'd get out of the harbor. And return back. And then, well, sometimes it could be like this one. Yeah, and then, I get, <laughs> and then I got towed back in. So once it was the motor seized, 
once the transmission gave up, and another time the fourth state came down. <laughs> fourth state is <laughs> a good experience. Yeah. I think it's the best one. You yeah. know, and you're like, oh, that, oh. Well, that was a scary one. Yes. With the motor and transmission, I always thought at least I could sail. Like, yeah, you, at least you can move. <laughs> yeah, but when the fourth state came down and the motor still didn't work, I was like, oh, well, that would oh, be no. really screwed. <laughs> Excuse me, pom pom. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Could you please tow me in back? Uh, so. No, that, yeah, it was always fun getting towed back in, and like especially like after like the third going away party, people were less enthusiastic. They're like, "Oh, you're gonna be back." <laughs> Welcome back, man. <laughs> <laughs> so you start in uh, Hawaii, mm -hmm. and after you just cross all Pacific, South Pacific, mm -hmm. and get uh, to Asia. Yep. Like uh, probably Indonesia. Yeah. Yeah, Indonesia and Thailand. Thailand. Uh, in Thailand, you change changed your boat yep so in thailand i my boat had it was leaking through the rudder so i had to haul out the boat oh it's okay and <laughs> not so bad <laughs> uh, and so i hauled it out and i at that point i was actually on the verge of quitting i uh like i didn't really know what to do because I, i didn't even have enough money for the haul out at the time and uh my girlfriend at the time told me to start a gofundme or do a crowdfunding uh -huh. and i did And so I started to go fund me and I raised like fifteen thousand dollars in about a week. Oh, okay. And all is of a sudden it is, is it work good? Yeah. And uh -huh. so all of a sudden I was like, okay, I'm, I could start sailing again. I have enough money to fix up the boat. And then somebody told me, they said, you know, it's like you could put twenty thousand dollars into the boat that you have, but it's still a ten thousand dollar boat. He said the boat right next to it, the yeah, owner's just to sell really it, yeah. keen to sell. Uh -huh. He says if you sell your boat for cheap, you could probably pick up this one on a really good deal. And that's what I did. I did a clamor, yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was a good idea. Yeah. It was perfect too. And this one was actually right next to mine on the hard stand. So it was almost <laughs> just, like, yeah. I could actually hand stuff over from my old boat <laughs> to this one. Throw it from yeah. one to another one and just put down another so, one. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, it was really convenient. So. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> it's a little bit crazy, but anyway, yeah. it's convenient. Yeah. But after after that, in, uh, from uh, Thailand, mm -hmm. what was next? So Thailand, I went to the Andaman Islands, which was amazing. Um, I never been, but uh, now they just make uh, the procedure to get the, in more easy. The procedure was a nightmare. It, yeah, uh, in India, yeah, everything related yeah. to India is nightmare. <laughs> It was 70 pages of paperwork for me, oh. and if you have crew, there's an additional 12 pages for every crew member. So you actually like... What is the surname of your grandma? Yeah. <laughs> It's a, most of it was copies, you know, so there's maybe 12 forms and then five or six copies of each form. But, uh, But yeah. now I know they make the procedure much easier. Oh, so it good. is just, uh, you should not send all the documents to India or somewhere, so it is just like something more easy. I good. heard it from uh, that information from last year. Yeah, I would love to go back. So that, that'd I know be nice. it. Maybe it is a good idea. It is. Yeah. The the diving off of uh, the outer islands is some of the best I've ever seen. Oh really? Yeah. There's a uh, two. One of the islands, Narcandum. Like even like the map in the office for the uh, like the cruising permit office. There was a big map of the Andaman Islands, and the key was over Narcandum Island. So the island wasn't even on their map of the Andaman <laughs> Islands. Oh, uh, we have some islands, but uh, <laughs> yeah. it's not exact. <laughs> yeah, but uh, that island, there was nobody on it, and it was stunning. There was so many fish and great diving and just wild. Lots wild of corals. Nature, like it should yeah. be, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it was one of the highlights of my trip, even. Mm. And after that, you get to Gol. Gol, yeah. So that was interesting. The Gaul Harbor was really tough. It, uh, it is. Yeah. A, yeah. I, re I really don't recommend it. But I love Sri Lanka and I love the Sri Lankan people. But the, uh, the Gaul Harbor like wasn't my favorite. Entering Kamali, it is the same bullshit. So yeah, they basically are trying to rip you off every time you come into the like all the guards are trying Give to get money. money from you. Give me yeah, money. Uh, <laughs> you've got the rabbit. You you got some. I know, veggies. Yeah. yeah. Pay me a text. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, Gaul wasn't my favorite. Um, And after you went to... Chagos. Uh, Chagos. Yeah. Ah, you, you stop in Chagos. Mm -hmm. It's like, I know it's a military base, yeah. Yeah, they, well, they're, you're not allowed to go to the military base. They, there's two atolls you could go to. Uh-huh. And um, both of them are uninhabited. Yeah. And so the... Uh, there's just also wild. Yeah. So you don't like people, amazing. yeah? No, no, I prefer to go places with no people. <laughs> Uh, okay. <laughs> I like the diving in the wildlife, so... No, I, to have, no not in the rubbish bin, you know? I, I do like the people as well, but yeah, the, 
it's interesting going places where there's no people. And, yeah. um, and after? Probably South Africa? Uh, Madagascar. Madagascar. And that was a place I loved the people. <laughs> but inside or outside? I went, yeah, I went around the northern tip and then uh -huh. down the west coast of Madagascar. Oh, okay, and, uh, okay. It's fantastic. It's absolutely beautiful. The people are amazing. Uh, the lemurs are great. They're really funny creatures that jump right on you and, you know, they're really neat. And then uh, the diving was really good there, too. So. But uh, what about the south part of Madagascar? Because I know it is a quite rough weather over there because it is the start of some uh, cyclone. So yeah, the, the trip from Madagascar to Mozambique is a tough one. So uh -huh. you, it took, uh, in the season we, I went, like there was like 20 something other boats that were going the same time as me. And we're all waiting for weather and the weather windows to get from one to the next island without getting smashed were short. So you, really this is just very narrow, very narrow mm -hmm. area when you, or time when you can go. Yeah, and they were spread far enough apart that the boats were bulking up, you know, because the people were running out of their visas and stuff waiting for good weather and just wasn't coming. And so like I overstayed in Madagascar by maybe a week waiting for weather. We stayed and in Kenya and we, we, we were waiting for uh, good weather for one month. Oh, yeah. It was totally no wind and after it was uh, 40 just knots. <laughs> one, uh, one, even more, even more, because uh, we passed uh, from Kenya to Socotra, mm -hmm. 1,500 uh, miles for eight days. Wow. So it just That's was like moving, a, yeah. oh, 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 flying! <laughs> yeah, that current's nice when you hit it. You yeah, know. see, everything is fast, but anyway, <laughs> come over there. Huge waves. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> They're quite scary, you know, oh. strong wind. On yeah. a third reef, and you just all the time think maybe just to put a storm sail, but no, <laughs> maybe not now, maybe next 15 yeah. minutes, and you have all the time like this. <laughs> yeah, it's always hard to put the storm sail up. But you're just like, yeah, you're always thinking, oh, it's going to calm down. It's going to yeah, calm down. Calm down. <laughs> like, oh, fuck the late. <laughs> yeah. It's like, look, you're like, I don't want to go out there. It's all wet and cold. <laughs> doesn't look like fun at all. I'm gonna go down below. <laughs> yeah, just because it's too scary to just be outside. Just gonna shut everything like, up and go downstairs. Yeah. <laughs> Put a, the, you know, the dust tape yeah, on, on a I little sleeping mask. <laughs> yeah, sleeping mask. <laughs> yeah, that's just my solution to that. I'm too scary, I go sleeping. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, so after you just, I uh, was a uh, African coast. Uh, it, I know it is a safe, this uh, area is safe. I. There's actually a really good weather router down there. His name's Des Kaysen, uh -huh. and he does weather routing for free. Uh -huh. And um, he actually, like I have a... He's from South Africa. Yeah, he's a South African. And he's actually made this trip himself like 30 times to Madagascar and back. Uh -huh. And so he knows all the hiding spots and he also knows all the nuances in the weather. So a lot of times you look at a weather map and there's different local effects that don't show up on our yes, weather you forecasting. Cannot, yeah, and like a, for example, like a... Uh, not, uh, the cape or something yeah. like this, or something weird, you know, you and not download yeah. this exactly. This data. And he, like, he'll look at it and it'll look fine to me. And then he's like, you know, when it's like this, you get this one weird effect, and it's gonna be blowing 50 and have, you know, it's very 10 meter seas, you know. And it's like, okay, well, maybe I'll wait until tomorrow or something. No, it is very helpful, yeah, yeah. it is very cool. So that yeah. was really amazing. So I actually. I, pre I really easily got around the South Africa coast and all the way around the Cape of Good Hope. And, like I even motored around the Cape of Good Hope and it was totally flat. And so <laughs> okay. I almost feel like I didn't do it. But it, uh, but luckily I joined a boat going to Antarctica this year. And so I flew to Chile so just you, from you South really, Africa uh -huh. and then went to Antarctica and back and then went around the Cape Horn. And so, but when I went around Cape Horn, it was blowing 50 knots. So at least I got one of the capes with a little bit of weather under it. And you did like, okay, I'm go to Caribbean. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah, that was like, all right. So, Not with you, bye bye, yeah, loser. It's, so it's, yeah, it's cold down here. I'm, <laughs> yeah, it's too cold. Yeah. Yeah. It's a penguin. I hate penguins. You know, yeah. Just go straight up. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and uh, after South Africa, you just uh, sent Helen and just yep. like regular way to Caribbean. Yeah, pretty much. What, I, the only thing different is I stopped in Ascension a lot. Of the sailors don't do that which i thought it was amazing like it um you know it wasn't too rolly and it wasn't too difficult getting to shore oh, nice. and um and then it wild? Oh, it it's just mostly wild. there's two military bases that, and but there's no soldiers even like so there's a u.s and british military base 
And they're being kept up. They have like employees keeping it up, but there's no actual troops or anything. Oh, okay. There. Is it just you and know so somebody like technical stuff that you're mm -hmm. taking about the equipment in the city? Yeah, and there's a lot of tracking equipment there. So they they have equipment for tracking the space debris. So that's where the NASA tracking yeah, equipment is uh -huh. for the space debris. Yeah, because very easy to lose it, just satellite <laughs> yeah. or something. <laughs> yeah. Nobody care about it. Uh, we need somebody in this house. Yeah. yeah. Is it any satellite over there? Uh, we don't know. Yeah. Like too late. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so it's cool for that. There's some cool history and, and again, great diving, great fishing. Yeah, okay. So do you dive all the time? Mm -hmm. Do you have equipment with you? Yep, yep. I have my own equipment on board. Um, I don't have a compressor, but usually there's other boats that usually have compressors around. So I've, I've been able to fill my tanks most of the time. Oh. Okay, well, my tanks also filled, uh, but I'm just, you know, uh, to use it. Yeah. You know, quite clever because just in case if I have something yeah, in my body, I just need to dive to do some scene. Just you know, I always make sure one. I have a full tank on board in case I need to ah, free okay. the anchor or something. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. You need all the time to do something. Yeah, so it's luckily I haven't had to do that yet, but it uh, so far I've always been able to get the anchor up without diving it. But it's I still worry that someday I'll need to go down there and sort something out. So, uh, in it. And here in Caribbean, how much time do you uh, going to spend? I think about a year. I, uh, yeah, so the same season for sailing to Hawaii is the season for sailing around the Caribbean. Yeah, because you know? it's north north part, uh, north of, mm -hmm. from Ecuador. Yeah, it's the same. So but, if I wanted to go to Hawaii this year, I'd go through the Panama Canal now and then go to Hawaii in like November, December. But I'd rather do the whole year in the Caribbean and then go through the Panama Canal next year and then go back home. But do you know that uh, Panama will increase the prices? I have heard that, but I'm going to have to figure out a way to make some extra money. Yeah, but it is uh, quite valuable because they want to increase the 100 percent. Yeah. yeah, I saw that. Bastard. Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers to the bastards. Not to see yeah. bastards in your yeah. life, you know. I want to charge it 100 percent more. I mean, I got to figure out something to charge for. But <laughs> yeah, but anyway, it is just quite painful. Yeah, you know? it is. Uh, and uh, so just what do you need to do to what do you need to do to finish your lap you know to finish your so just cross Panama Canal yeah. and a uh, small trip on the north <laughs> yeah so from Panama Canal to Hawaii is 4000 miles yeah i know but so uh, but i i haven't decided yet i'll either go back to mexico or, or go to Mexico. I've been there before, but not with the boat. That was um, my question. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, going so, to do <laughs> so I'll either go to Mexico and then from Mexico to Hawaii, which is a tough trip up that coast, you know, because the wind kind of comes from the yeah, northeast. Yeah, from it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so the upwind, though. Yeah, it's upwind the whole way. And then so what most people do is they wait for lulls in the wind and motor, and um, or I'll go to French Polynesia. And yeah, that's French what I'm, I to think. Hawaii. Just to go, for example, on Hilo and from Hilo. Just yeah. go straight to Hawaii. And I think that's more likely what I'll do because it. Uh, I've never been to French Polynesia, so it is very beautiful. Yeah, I, I'll give you contact uh, some people in the well, negotiations, so you can easily go there and after to to Marquesas and from Marquesas straight to Hawaii. Sounds great. I uh, yeah, I I think that'll likely be what I end up doing. And uh, uh, I think the question which uh, many people ask you uh, how it's difficult to sail because uh, you just uh, only single-handed mm -hmm. um, yeah it's it's kind of a tough question because I actually have never sailed with two hands before so I don't know what's more difficult I use my teeth a lot so it's but the sailing part's really not that tough. It, uh, what's tough is when something goes wrong, you know, if something... Yes, exactly. If you need to fix something on the mast or... Yeah, uh, so post, something post wraps up or something gets tangled or a line breaks or whatever it is. Like, trying to fix these things with one hand. And even, like, the wind vane breaks broke on me quite a few times in the Pacific. And, you know, you're hanging off the back of the boat and then the water's coming up over your it head. It is a dangerous and part, Trying yeah. to fix something in the water with one hand is uh, it's quite difficult. You know, if something happened on your mast, if you have it two hands, it's just not really help you. Nah. Well, because you just cannot get on a storm condition on yeah, the mast and do something. It's the same. Anyways, yeah. Yeah. No, big, no big difference in this one. So yeah. if you're in trouble, it's, you're in trouble. Yeah, <laughs> anyway. that's true. And <laughs> just I've, try to survive. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard sailors say a lot that, you know, all sailors sail one-handed because they want one hand for the boat and one hand for their job. And 
I just don't hang on. <laughs> I usually do it like in one hand, so it just it uh, and beer, beer and yeah. another one steer. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you are more multitasking, mm -hmm. you just need to put it in, just steer yeah, and drink. Yeah. Just, <laughs> yes. You get pockets. <laughs> yeah, yeah, proper equipment. Yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> steer <and it. laughs> I tried having cup holders on the boat, but they always stuck out somewhere and run into them. And so They're like hiddenism, you know? <laughs> yeah, so I ended up taking them all off. <laughs> <laughs> Porsche life, you know, just everywhere. Yeah. Put like cradles for yeah. beer, you know, everywhere. Exactly. <laughs> Can you show uh, your pot? Yeah. Okay. Here, let me put a leg on. Let's do it. <laughs> so let's go. All right, this is Tiama. So Tiama. Tiana. Tiama. Tiama. Yeah. What does it mean? It means freedom in Polynesian, I'm told, but I didn't name it, and the previous owner of the boat did. But I haven't been able to verify that anywhere, so I'm not positive that's what it means. Yeah, you will find it in the, <laughs> in the French Polynesia. Yeah, so what, yeah. what is the brand of this boat? So this is a Bristol 355C, and it's a 1983. The C stands for centerboard, so it helps that it's shallow, like I could actually get into really shallow areas. So uh, it's like a shred boat, you know, you can go, get to the beach. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> you know, just park right on the beaches and stuff. It is a cozy inside, so but yeah. it, uh, so generally this is where it's I sleep American. at sea. Yep, it's an American boat. So usually I'm right here because I could hear the AIS alarm, like uh -huh. on my Garmin and whatever. So if there's any alarms for boats nearby, I could hear that if I'm sitting right here. And then it's also quick for me to jump upstairs and do something. Do you often too. sit in a chart table? I never sit in the chart uh, table. Do you use yeah. uh, paper charts? I have no, I don't use paper charts. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> <laughs> yep. so, so if you're doing a, a different tax, you can use this. Yeah, this. so different tax. And both of these fold out, actually. So I don't fold this one out because it blocks the bathroom door. Ah, OK. <laughs> so this one I fold out, though. So yeah, it comes Maybe. out to here. Oh, okay. And so when I'm on this tack, I'll sleep on this side, or if I'm going downwind, I sleep on this side because it's a nice big area. And yeah, then, okay. So it's only if I'm on an upwind tack that I actually sleep on this side. This was a table, yeah? Yep, so this folds down. This is actually a really nice table. Uh huh. But it's quite big, you know. It's for yeah, it takes up this whole area. <laughs> yeah, yeah you, could, you could easily like have six people in here for dinner and it'd actually be pretty comfortable. Um, this sign I got as a, like I was 19 years old actually. So this is like one of the things that I've actually kept for a while. So, uh -huh. ladies, you've been warned. Um, this one is one of my favorite things, too. So this was actually... As a captain, sir. Yeah, so that's off a World War II Navy vessel. And um, uh -huh. the vessel actually saw action in World War II. And a friend of mine's dad was a steward to the captain. Uh -huh. And so he gave my friend that, and since he didn't have a boat, he gave it to me to take around the world. So it, it means this this cabin is a captain cabin. This is the captain's <laughs> the cabin. cabin. <laughs> and it's a big mess because I'm doing my laundry, so that's... Okay. But it's quite big area. Yeah, it is quite big. Yeah, area. it's pretty comfortable. Yeah, and uh, on the side, the uh, angles, like you can you can sleep on the side of your boat. <laughs> yeah, you could. It's I don't really sleep up there at sea because when it's bouncing. Yeah, it's, it's too much. It's yeah, too I mean, much. We are up doing there. the storage compartment yep, yep. from from Here, cabin. Here's the head. Nothing too exciting in there. So it's uh, uh -huh. it's still pretty comfortable. Like it's pretty big and nice. Yeah, and this is good for. Yeah, you can yeah, hang hanging yeah. on and yeah. yeah, when the boat's sideways, you get your feet up on the walls and stuff. <laughs> yeah, when walking in the wall. <laughs> yeah, trying to, yeah, exactly. So here's the fruit hammock. I actually had a funny story. When I first put one of these up, it was on my trip in the Pacific, and one of these lines broke, and the fruit thing started swinging, and it was slinging apples at me the whole time. So I'm <laughs> laying in bed, and all of a sudden just get pelted with apples. <laughs> and, yeah. and so. So but now I tie these up better. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so do you have uh, uh, two cabins? The front cabin and uh, like a master cabin? No, that's pretty much it. There's This is supposed to be a sleeping area here. Oh, it is it just like a... But, so that's just sail storage. So that's, uh -huh. that's uh, all my extra sails are up there. How many sails do you have? I have... So I have the main and Genoa that are on there now. I have a storm tri-sail, a storm jib. But storm trysail you never use. I never use a storm trysail. I've used <laughs> yeah. a storm jib a couple of times. Yeah. Uh, I have a working jib for like 25 to 30 knots that I'll put up that hangs on. And then I have two other Genoas. And how many reefs do you have on the main? I have three, three reefs in the main. Okay. 
And one of them's not deep enough. I wish the third reef was deeper. It's, <laughs> it's still too much at 35 knots. I'd like to be able to still sail at 35 knots, but that <laughs> reef, it's it's overpowering. Is it, it is all the time some gap you cannot cover. It is always, yeah. it or too much or not enough. You yeah, know? <laughs> exactly. So. And this is a kitchen. Yep, so this is the kitchen area. Um, nice deep sinks. I really like yes. this because yes. uh, you get lots of dishes in there. Um, yeah, this is a nice three burner stove. The uh, oven. Are working on propane? Yep. The oven is ridiculously difficult to start. And the previous owner of the boat actually knew that I had, like, not the person I bought it from, but the person before that. I emailed him and asked him how to start the oven. He's like, well, I don't think this is going to suit you because he knew it I had one hand. You know, yeah. Yeah, because you have to hold that little red button here. Ah, okay. And then you open this and down at the bottom, there's a thing. You get to and hold the flame on it. Oh, and you have okay. to do this for about 30 seconds. And um, yeah, it's really a pain in the butt. And so the oven doesn't really get used too much. Uh, sometimes we are using it when we just uh, in a long, long way. Mm -hmm. It is just the easiest just to put everything inside, oh, yeah. switch it on and forget for uh, like one hour, switch it off and that's it. Oh, that <laughs> sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, what is here? It is just all, so, all yep. equipment. Yep, that's all the electrical panel. It, uh, uh -huh. And everything works, which is nice. Like the boat, it's a good functioning boat. There's not really any, so the any problems. Is it fully maintained? Yeah, fully everything's maintained, working yeah. well. Yeah, so uh -huh. after being on it for two years, I've sorted out most of the nuances. I am actually getting the fridge fixed tomorrow. So, that's so you already uh, arranged your appointment? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Ah, okay, cool. So that's going to get sorted tomorrow and the next day. And hopefully, yeah, my main list is taken care of. Now the rest is just tidying up and maybe doing some cosmetic work. You can use mine <laughs> 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 for calling a beer. <laughs> yeah, 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 okay. Yeah. So, uh, go outside. But this steering wheel is a knot uh, with a chain. It is a sh like kind of shaft inside, yeah? No, there's a cable. The cables? Yeah. Ah, so it is a small chain and cables inside also. Yep, yep. Ah, okay. And then... Um, it's going straight to rudder or... No, nope. so there's a quadrant down below. Uh -huh. It goes to here. I guess you could open this. So the quadrant steers here, and this uh, is uh -huh, this uh -huh. is also where my emergency tiller goes. So I could open this thing and use the emergency tiller to this, uh -huh. and steer with the emergency tiller. Which autopilot do you have? So I see so, you have a Ray Marine, but it's a just angle uh, angle mirror. Yeah. So it's it's been acting up lately. So I'm not sure what's going on, but it. It's kind of driving like Stevie Wonder at the moment. Just this way, this way. It's not really okay. holding it for us too well. Um, this thing works pretty well, so this is a wind vane. Yes, and I, it's it's going uh, straight to your steering wheel. Yep, it is so a for a wind vane. I have the blocks here uh -huh. and there, and then I'll clip here. And then from here, the lines will go to this. Yes, yes. And uh, uh, do you use a, a external rudder for a wind vane? No, no, this is a, this, so this is a servo pendulum design, they call it. So this rudder, all it does is it pulls a line that actually pulls to the steering wheel. That but it's like a motion rudder. rudder, it's like a second one. You can use it just in case of something. I'm not sure if it's big enough, but I would give it a try if it uh, ever came sure down to it. For sure, I think you yeah. can do it. Because if you use a wind vane uh, without the cables, which is going to steer and wheel, you can just use it so with a personal rudder. You'd have to lock it in place. Yes, yeah. you have to, and but no. anyway. But yeah, it, it would probably be possible. So. Okay, can you show me your deck? So, show me your deck! <laughs> You have a pool, so do you use a spinnaker? I, I pull out the head sail with it. Ah, okay. So I'm using it the same also for yeah. just for Genoa. Yeah, so the spinnaker pull, it actually broke again. It's supposed to be telescoping, and there's twice now that I've had to repair it. Okay, yeah. Uh, I have just only one, not telescopic. So, But do you need to go uh, for making this? Yeah, yeah the so, so people ask me a lot if the boat's modified for disability. The only two things I've done to this boat to modify it is this self-tailing winch here that I got off a sunken boat and I rebuilt it and here it is. So I actually got this for free, which was really nice. Uh-huh. And there's another one. Let's see it. Right here. Oh, uh, yeah, I see, I see. Uh-huh. 
Uh-huh. So that one too, because before when I had to reef, I have to put this line, wrap it around here, put it in my teeth, and then crank it and use my teeth to like. Because it is in uh, it was it's just because it is a no lock on yep. it. And yeah. same with this. So before when I pull the head sail or the mainsail, I'd put the line between my teeth and crank it to get the sail up. And uh, you know, I did that from Hawaii all the way to Thailand, or all the way to South Africa actually, where I got this. Uh huh. So that's uh I think there's going to be less wear and tear on my reefing lines now that I don't use my teeth on them. <laughs> it, uh, oh, you're using teeth to do it is quite dangerous yeah, stuff. Yeah. But uh, you have all teeth with you, yeah, so it's, it's, still it's, there. it's still there. And, um, <laughs> Just because it uh, you did not uh, make any mistake. That's right. <laughs> and with this, like reefing with your teeth is really tough because when you're reefing, the bang, 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 bang. Yes, bang, it is bang, just bang, all the time moving all around. You know, you, you need know. to just be yeah. very strong. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so. but how how it's difficult to you to walk on the uh, on the deck because the boat is moving. It's I'm pretty used to it to be honest. So one so. We have Deck, which it actually does a little bit better it's not true because this foot you know i can't angle it so when i walk it does stuff like this like with this foot you just point it yes and you yes, go yes, by. yes 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 you, you, you just can you know grip something right and so with these feet they don't i mean they're just like hooking everything as you go by and so the peg leg works pretty good but I actually lost it the first day that i got here so <laughs> okay. i went for a swim and it fell off and Shit. Just uh, lost it. Yeah. You need a new one. Yeah, yeah. So uh, okay. I think a new one should be coming. Uh, <laughs> so. Yeah. So let's go. So let's continue drink. All right. Yeah, the beers are almost yeah. done. So <laughs> <laughs> I think there's time for more. So um, I know that you have your um, Instagram and uh, YouTube or not. Yep. Yep. I have uh, all that stuff. There's actually links on my website. So. I have a website with links to my crowdfunding and social media. Uh -huh. and it's thesinglehandedsailor.com. So it's so everything will be just in the description, and, uh, and you can see it right now. It is a website, and everything linked to. Yeah. Okay, it's cool. Uh, so anyway, we will be sail the same area quite long time, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so we might have a few more beers over time. Every time, yeah. yeah all right. So <laughs> Nastrovia, <Okay>. yeah. <laughs> Nastrovia. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. Thank you. Please subscribe to mine YouTube channel, probably. And mine too. Here. But I'm not yes. that active on it. But it's a good idea. Maybe there will be something cool someday on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we will make some cool project as well oh, okay. in the future. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, sounds great. Yeah, so subscribe and uh, to YouTube channel, put like, and see you soon. Aloha. Bye bye. Aloha. Aloha. <laughs> <laughs>
I don't know. It's the first time it's happened. <laughs> but I think it's because I tied them up. Like I tied those uh, fur hammocks up to the to the rail for the bookshelf. I think that pulled the rail out. So all the books went. <laughs> <laughs>